Good morning. In this class today, we're going to look at the literature review and how to effectively develop a literature review for your action research project. And on completion of this week's task, you should be able to fully understand what's needed for a literature review and also how to go about developing a literature review for yourself for the topic that you have chosen. So we're going to go through some of the requirements for an effective literature review, some of the methods that you could use, and how to identify scholarly resources and how to use these scholarly resources. On the Moodle website, we've placed some resources such as Spencer Clark and Susan Peratt's Action Research Resource, Chapter 3, on planning for your research, reviewing the literature, and some other resources that you'll find helpful. In the Action Resource, uh, resource by uh, Efren and uh, Ravid, also uh, you'll find some valuable material on how to develop the literature review. And we'll also provide some other resources as well. Let's begin with the first resource that we mentioned, planning the research, reviewing the literature and developing the questions, where we look at ways in which you can locate and develop an understanding of the relevant literatures for the subject that you are looking at. You might want to think more deeply about what is required in an effective literature review and how you know that you've located the most relevant and valuable literatures and how you can apply these literatures in your resource. And you might be able to reflect more widely on how you can use these methods of literature review in other topics that you may be investigating and other subjects that you may be doing. The beginning of the literature review requires you to first think about what is your area of focus, such as uh, action research, what's required for that, uh, such as your particular topic, which could be literacy or numeracy within a other area that you could be studying, such as business studies or science or uh, maths or English or other areas that you may be interested in. And so as you define this topic and define what you're looking at, then you'll be clearly focusing more on the particular literatures that you're looking at. So one of the first starting points in doing a literature re review is to identify the topic that you're looking at and the research questions that you're wanting to look at. The second step is to begin to locate relevant literatures and then the third step beginning to review these literatures to take notes and to evaluate and to analyse the literatures that you're looking at. So firstly, you need to ask, what do we know about the topic already? And you might want to jot down some notes about what you know, but also think about what you don't know. And the challenge is that we often don't know what we don't know. That is, uh, the areas that you're not familiar with yet, you've just got to trust that the process of literature review is going to unfold some of those areas that you're looking at. Which are the best literatures to be looking at? We want those that are most recent. That is, the most recent should be aware of the older literatures and should be able to advance towards more current areas that we're interested in. Secondly, we want to know what focus areas we're going to choose to be careful we don't go down a rabbit trail into other areas that are less related. Thirdly, we want to know what area that we're going to be focusing on in terms of our teaching, that is, are we prep, primary, secondary, what area we're going to focus on and how can we focus the literatures relating to these areas. So what are some of the literatures we could review? There are literatures that relate to the particular teaching of your subject area in your state and in the education department that you're working at. And if you're working from a particular faith tradition, there could be literatures on teaching from those faith traditions. In an academic assignment or writing, we do want to focus on academic material where possible and also on other curriculum material that may be provided by the government or the state. 
We want to also focus on theoretical literatures. That is, what are the theories that underpin our understanding of teaching in these particular areas and the ways in which people think and write and learn in these areas? And so you may be working with theories about education and learning. You may be working with theories that relate to your particular topic areas, such as maths, literacy, numeracy, and also other areas such as science, history, business studies, and other areas as well. What are the theories behind how people learn and understand? What are the theories behind those topics that you're looking at? There are also application areas of literature. That is, how do you apply these theories in teaching and how do students learn? And in your methodology literatures, how do we research the students' understanding? How do we research the teaching methods and how effective they are? How do we research our action research approaches and how effective they are? In the literatures that we use, we use the term primary resources to refer to original documents and papers and dissertations where people are engaging primary material, they're getting straight in there and working with it. And then this material is processed in various ways and written in books and in written in uh, other more developed writings. And this is called secondary literature. Primary literature is particularly important because it takes us to the coalface. It takes us to where the cutting edge discoveries are being made. And the secondary literature is also important because it shows the ways in which the discussion has developed and new insights have been uh, gathered. In using the internet, you're able to gather a larger amount of material more quickly by going to the college resources or Google Scholar. Uh, going to the college library or going to a search engine such as Scholar Google can give you some uh, very good resources. Some people, of course, may uh, like to use ChatGPT or artificial intelligence. If you do, then when we mark your resources, they will identify any that have been used without change and develop it. And you could fail if you follow that. But if you use something like AI or ChatGPT uh, in a care way so that you rewrite all the material, you use it just as a stimulus rather than something to hand in, then uh, that is possible. You also want to evaluate the resources that you gather. That is, is it by a scholar? Can we identify the name of the scholar, uh, the area they work, and the, the scholarly location um, of the person who's writing it? And often you want to write down some notes about the name of the scholar who writes the particular literature, the recent date of their writing, uh, the scholarly um, location where they're publishing. Having uh, identified your topic and question, having found some literatures using the college library or Google Scholar. You then want to take some notes and to organize the material that you gather from this literature. And you want to think about the ways in which you can write some of this in your own words. You may paraphrase some of it and say, scholar so-and-so says such and such and rewrite that in your own words. And then you want to interact with that using your own thoughts and ideas so that it becomes your own idea ideas rather than just a summary of the material that the scholars have provided. If you only interact with one scholarly material in a paragraph, often this is a summary, but if you interact with two or three or more scholarly materials in a paragraph, this helps you to go beyond a summary to a analysis and discussion where you seek to identify the major ideas, to interact with them and come up with ideas of your own. And if you can come up with original, insightful ideas of your own, that is particularly important, but these need to then be tested and recheck to make sure that they are sound. And this can be a bit of a scary process in that, that you've got to be a bit brave to work with ideas of your own. Um, and then you have to check them and rework them in, in order to ensure that they are robust. So some questions to think about as you examine these literatures you're working with. What's the context of the literature and research? Different people come from different schools of thoughts and backgrounds. What's involved in gathering the literature? 
How did they come up with their ideas and how does this relate to your notion of taking an action and applying the action in order to gather material? How would these literatures relate to what you're setting out to do in your action research project? And you may want to think about when have you got enough literature? Usually you begin with one or two major literatures and authors, and then you're discovering lots of new things. And after four or five, you're seeing that they're repeating some of the things. And after 10 or 11, you feel as though you've covered much of the literature. And usually after 10, 15 or more resources have been examined, you would expect to have a reasonable idea of what's being gathered. And there'll still be perhaps three or four resources that you'll be depending on and interested interacting with more than some of the other resources. You want to document carefully the material that you gathered in terms of the name, the author, the date and the location so that you can find it again and you can put in the references and you uh, can carefully note where it came from. You'll also want to engage with the literature to think about it. And sometimes you might want to go for a walk, or keep a journal, whereby you take notes on how you interact with these literatures and come up with some ideas of your own. You want to identify significant themes and arguments and theories and ideas. You want to look at common concepts and ideas that can be uh, relevant to the work that you're doing. And you want to think about how it applies in your project, your action research project that you're working with. In thinking about the context, you might want to think about the social or the mental cognitive or teacher um, uh, settings and contexts that you're working with. And you might want to think about the ways in which these ideas can be applied and researched further. So this resource uh, that you can find on the Moodle website is particularly uh, useful and it can be found by reading Spencer Clark and Susan Parath Action Research. Uh, They're planning your research, reviewing the literature, developing questions in Chapter 3. And uh, that's particularly useful. And on the Moodle website, we mention other resources such as Efron and Ravid's resource on action research in education. And if you go down down to page 17, you'll come to the section where we discuss uh, the development of the literature review and some of the ideas that we're seeking to apply. So if you take time to immerse yourself in scholarly literatures, in two or three or four scholarly literatures in your topic area, and also related areas such as what is action research, what is education and uh, teaching, um, then you'll begin to immerse yourself in this material and you'll begin to gain ideas that you'll be able to work with. You'll begin to discover threads and themes, debates and questions that scholars are asking and working with. You'll be able to situate your material within historical and geographical and theoretical contexts and settings. And you'll be able to identify areas where further research is needed, such as the research that you're carrying out, uh, methods and processes and procedures that are often used in this research, and ways in which you're able to focus and narrow the material that you're working on. Certainly the first step in carrying out a literature resource and review is to locate sources and the college library and other scholarly university libraries are particularly useful. And then online, Google Scholar is very useful. So if you go to uh, Google Scholar, that is uh, scholar.google, and if you uh, put in uh, your research uh, area, such as uh, action uh, research uh, literature uh, review, and your topic area might be uh, science literacy or business literacy or other areas. Then, in the right hand side, we have uh, resources 
that you could use, such as improving scientific literacy through reading strategies. If we click on CITE site, then we can make a copy of this uh, resource uh, description. We can uh, then cut and paste that into the material that we're working uh, with, and we've got a copy of it uh, there um, for us. And then we can uh, read it, summarize it, and work uh, through the material. And so uh, if we uh, go to the article and then read uh, through the article, we can uh, start to take some summary notes. Notice that this is a Master of Education, um, a Doctor of Education a project from the University of South and Carolina in 2017. And it gives us a wonderful example of how you might write out this sort of project. So it's an action research project that looks at scientific reading intervention. And it's looking at students in chemistry in a high school in South Carolina. And over a six week period, uh, teacher participants uh, worked uh, to find out how pre-reading um, and post-reading and other reading activities could improve an understanding of what's going on in chemistry. And then it begins on uh, page 16 with the literature review. And in uh, this literature review introduction, they look at some textbooks relating to this area and the sort of literatures that are presented in the textbooks and what the scholars say, and then they seek to better understand what's happening. The importance of this literature review is explained, and then the importance of the action research project is also discussed. Then they move on to look at the way in which the action research design is going to be constructed and how the literature can inform what they are doing. They look at the history of the particular area they're looking at, and you could look at culture and you could look at geographic settings as well. And then they also look at the particular focus area, which is science literacy and how students uh, become familiar with uh, chemistry literacy in particular. And they look at some examples there. They look at how teachers engage with this. So these are some areas that could be looked at. Particularly, the focus area is on scientific literacy. That is, how do people understand um, complex scientific uh, concepts? How do they come to understand the vocabulary that they're working with? Scholars have written about this and examined it. And they've also written about the ways in which graphic images can be useful to many students. And how can other literacy approaches such as tables be used? What's the importance of understanding prior knowledge? What's the importance of uh, developing reading comprehension strategies? They look also at various models for learning and including the 5E model of uh, Dewey's, which looks at the phases of inquiry, uh, exploration, intervention and discovery, uh, engaging with uh, new information and uh, gaining knowledge. And they look at other models as well. And so you can see there's quite a, a complex series of ideas that have been identified uh, in this particular project in which a number of scholars are engaged and their ideas, such as uh, Pelinsa and Brown, who say that one daunting problem um, is that of comprehension um, and we need to develop certain uh, strategies. And uh, that's discussed in some depth in this paragraph here. And then there's other scholars that are interacted with, other material that's engaged and it's rewritten in the student's own work and then put together in this discussion that's been developed. And then there'd be editing of this material before it's fully reworked into what is presented.
As they begin to work through the literature, they recognise that there's pre-reading and previous knowledge that they have. There's certain reading strategies that different students uh, bring. And then afterwards, there are certain strategies. Some take notes, some work through the material in different ways, and they can look at that. And they can also look at how this transitions on beyond the student's high school experience. So this is a, um, a valuable resource uh, that uh, you uh, could find from uh, using Google Scholar to search that particular topic area that you're interested in. And you could do that for whatever topic area you're interested in, whether it be history, geography, English, uh, maths, or whatever. In the case that we've shown, it's scientific literacy in science lessons that we were focusing on here. And then we develop an action research project from uh, looking at 10 or 15 scholars, what they write about this. And we come up with ideas. And one of the ones that you saw there was the use of visual and diagrams uh, to help understand. Another could be uh, use of uh, peer interaction. Another uh, could be uh, the use of experiments where students can uh, see uh, what is going through experiments that they carry out. So there's a number of strategies that you can develop for your action research. And then you need to come up with ideas about collecting data on how effective these actions are. And these are great insights that you can apply in your your teaching throughout your teaching career, uh, whether informally or more formally, such as in this project that we are working on in this action uh, research uh, project that we're looking on here. There are a number of other literatures available and uh, as well as the literatures that we have uh, mentioned, um, Efron and uh, Ravid's uh, resource, uh, you'll see uh, there, uh, there's quite a discussion of how to locate the resources, um, how to identify the central terms and concepts and keywords that you're looking at and how to use these in your research. If you get the keywords right, then you'll find the material that you're looking for. But if you can't find the keywords, it'll be much harder to locate the material that you're looking for. So identifying the keywords can be uh, particularly important. Your interests should guide what you're looking at. Scholarly research and writing, particularly within the last 10 years, should also guide the material that you're looking at. Uh, the scholarly level of material and the scholarly theories should also be uh, useful. And as you read through the literatures, then you'll see themes emerging that you'll be able to develop and explore further. You'll see words and terms emerging that you'll be able to use to look at literatures relating to these more and you need to be careful not to go off on side tracks. So you'll begin by skimming through each article and then you'll go through it again more slowly and dig deeper into it, skipping over some material and digging deeper into other material, making a note of where it comes from and how you can use it. And then you'll record that in a certain way. In older times, it was done on cards, uh, but in recent times, it's often done on the computer file that you'll keep so you need to back these up and uh, you need to be able to use these in various ways. So as you go through the literature you'll find it'll head in a number of different directions and you want to identify key ideas and themes that hold the literatures together and then you'll construct an outline of the material that you gather and so you might make a note of the authors and date and then the themes they discuss and then you'll gather the material in similar themes uh, together so that it can be gathered into the one section of your assignment and then having gathered all this material from 10 or 15 or more scholars Together, under various themes, you might do a mind map, you might construct an outline of how this is going to be presented, and then you'll begin to flesh it out in your own words, and you'll begin to check where you've got insufficient resources in some areas, and you'll add a few more resources and ideas there, and it'll develop more and more as you go along. 
And so if you develop a thorough and well-developed literature review, um, then this can be the major part of your assignment. And if your action research doesn't go forward, you can still gain a good mark, a good assessment by completing the literature review well, by analysing the information from scholars well. That is... In this particular subject at this time, you don't have to complete an active action research project. You can just do the literature review. But if you are willing to complete an ethics application, particularly the one sheet that you need to complete, and carry out some action research, that is an option that may be available to you as well. But whichever option you choose, the literature review is particularly important. And without a well-developed literature review and understanding of what scholars have said about the topic that you're looking at, you're not likely to be effective in your project. If you type into Google the name Australian University Literature Review, you'll find that a number of resources will come up. So if we go to uh, Google and type into Google Australian uh, uh, University, so Australian uh, University, Australian University Literature Review, Australian um, university Literature Review, um, then uh, you'll find that there's a number of articles produced by the uh, universities that you'll be able to go to and interact with and some videos that you can watch on what's required. And so most universities in Australia have put out a discussion of what makes for a good literature review, and you'll be able to interact with these. For example, the University of Melbourne has put forward some great material that you'll be able to read through. And if you want to find out more about a literature review, and there's a 10 minute video that you can watch on the literature review. So there's plenty of material out there to help you develop a literature review. Charles Sturt University is similarly put out some good material on what's needed for the literature review. And again, you could read through this and it would give you some guidelines on what to do to get an effective literature review. Monash University also has some material, Deakin University, University of New South Wales and Australian National Universities. There's plenty of material out there that you'll be able to engage with if you want uh, further material. And if you have any difficulties, get in touch with me or with other lecturers that you're working with and we'll be glad to help you to do well in the topics that you're working with. Certainly there's some great literature out there that'll help you with your studies and having a careful, effective approach to literature review will help you to identify and engage with these scholarly literatures more effectively and to use them in your action research project or other scholarly um, projects that you're working with in your other subjects as well. Thank you. I look forward to keeping in touch as we go forward.